here's a very quick recap of something we discovered and then uh, a way to apply it. We looked at the unit circle and we've got this little triangle in here, x and y, the y is here, the x and area is here, I know the labeling is a little hard, are sine and cosine of this angle FOD or FOA I guess I'm calling it. And we applied Pythagoras to that triangle and that's x squared plus y squared. And it's usually the hypotenuse squared, right? Well, here it is, but that's 1 squared, so that's just 1. Or in other words, cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. And there's this weird notation of instead of saying, saying cosine theta parentheses squared, you put the squared here on top of the function name, just to say parentheses, basically. And then the even more interesting thing was there were a couple of other triangles. There's OAB and COP, and those turned out to contain the other four trig functions as lengths. And in OAB, turns out, well, OA is 1, because it's a unit circle, and AB was tangent theta, and so Pythagoras is going to say 1 squared, I'm not going to write the squared, plus tangent squared, and it turns out that OB is secant theta. Okay, and that's not the only way to derive that identity, but it's a fairly cool way to see it. And then it turns out COP contains cotangent, which is CP, and cosecant, which is OP. And so there, the cotangent squared, that CP, plus 1, is equal to the hypotenuse squared, which is cosecant squared. Okay, these are all coming from Pythagoras on these three different triangles. They're called the Pythagorean identities. So why would we care about these? Well, this one is absolutely, utterly crucial because it really just registers the fact that we're on the unit circle. This, equa this is another way to say the equation of a circle in Cartesian coordinates, and it's just coming from Pythagoras with a constant unit uh, hy hypotenuse. And then these guys are really crucial for relating these functions as well. So let me show you um, a use of that. Let me do a problem. Let me actually just take this away. Let me do a problem very much like a book problem, where let's suppose we have a mystery angle theta, and we're going to leave it a mystery, but what we know is that the cotangent theta, the cotangent theta is minus 4, and we know the sine is negative. We, it turns out if we just know this data, we don't can't quite determine what, what the other trig functions are, and that's the, that's the goal here. We want to get the other trig functions. This is a fairly common situation where we know something about one trig function coming from something about the geometry of our problem, but that's not the one we actually want to calculate. Okay, So there's a couple ways to do it. Let me show you a more geometric way and then a way that's really arguably more efficient if uh, maybe and more algebraic from these guys. Okay, So uh, let's draw a picture. Okay, Let's draw, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a circle and I'm not going to insist that it's a unit circle. And that means I have to be careful, because I can't just use x and y, for example, as sine. I have to remember it's about ratio. So really going back to the, the triangle trig thing. But, ah, negative numbers, that's going to indicate I have to go out into some different quadrant. So first I need to figure out what quadrant I'm in. Well, if sine theta is negative, that's where the y is negative. That's quadrant 3 or 4. Cotangent, you know, the way I would do that is there's a couple of definitions for cotangent. It's cosine over sine, which is super important to remember. Uh, but it's also 1 over tangent, except for uh, certain places where you know, tangent is like undefined. But basically, it's 1 over tangent. And so that means it's 1 over the slope of the line we would draw through the origin at that angle. OK, I know where slope is negative. That's going down like this. And so it's going to be here. It's going to be a quadrant 4. OK. And then I'm going to draw a triangle. I'm not going to worry too much about drawing exactly to scale. But let's see, I want 1 over the slope to be a pretty big number. Minus 4 is pretty far away from 0. So the slope should be small. Something like that. OK, so now I want cotangent theta. Uh, yet another definition of this, of course, is adjacent over hypotenuse. Notice how I'm using a lot, pulling a lot of equivalents out for cotangent to do one problem. And that's not unusual, so we have to, to think about it that way. I want to build a triangle with this mystery angle here, like that. That's theta. Or equivalently, you could make it a negative number and put it in here. So that this ratio, adjacent over hypotenuse, is minus 4. Well, I'm going to be a little clever and say that's minus 4 over 1. Sometimes you need to promote an integer to be a fraction, and that's a pretty simple way to do it. Okay, so adjacent, we're going to do 
Um, you know, that's actually going to need, need to be 4, and that's going to need to be minus 1. So that makes the adjacent over, uh, uh, not hypotenuse, just kidding. I hope you guys were laughing derisively at me. Okay. Um, it's adjacent over opposite. So adjacent over opposite then becomes a minus 4, and I'm in the right quadrant. Now the key is I can't do anything really to figure out most of the other trig functions except tangent here, unless I know that that um, hypotenuse, but that's not too hard. That's Pythagoras, and it's the square root of 4 squared plus 1 squared, so it's the square root of 17. Okay. So now I can... I want to leave my identities there. Let, well, let's put it in here. We've got some room. Okay. Then I can just pull everything off the triangle. And this is not a bad way to do things. Um, certainly tangent, I could have done that right away. Hey, wait a minute. It's 1 over this, so it's minus 1 fourth. Okay. Um, and then let's go to the really important one, sine theta. Okay, I know that better come out being negative. That's going to be opposite over hypotenuse, minus 1 over root 17. Cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, 4 over root 17. That's positive. And notice uh, the ratio of these guys, sine over cosine, the root 17s cancel. I get minus 1 fourth. It is the right sign. And then the other ones are easy. Cosecant theta is just 1 over that. It's minus root 17. And secant theta is 1 over cosine or root 17 over 4. One thing I didn't bother to do is rationalize these denominators. And um, you should know how to do that, but I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, now what's the other way? I like this geometric way, because I always like going back to geometry, but if you want to do it more efficiently, you could use these algebraic identities. Okay, so we're given cotangent. Oh, let's write up the problem again. Cotangent theta is minus 4, and we know sine theta is negative. Okay, so, well, let's re remember, first of all, you're always going to be able to get 1 easily, because 1 is just the reciprocal of the one you're given. Okay, boom. Tan theta is minus, minus 1 fourth. So we're, we got that. Now this one gives us cosecant. Okay, Cosecant squared theta is uh, just 1 plus cotangent squared theta. 1 plus 16 is 17. And then I just square root it, and the, this comes in to tell me which sine I, I, I'm going to have. Cosecant, we need to remember, is 1 over sine. And again, that can be a little confusing. You just have to remember, memorize that correctly. And so I'm going to take the negative of the square root. Boom. Done. Okay. And then we're almost home free. Uh, this guy is going to give us secant squared. Secant squared theta. Okay, that's 1 plus 1 16th, or 17 sixteenths. Take the square root. Secant theta, and I'm going to leave the plus or minus here because it's a little trickier. Root 17 over 4, okay. And we need to know that that's actually going to be positive. How do we know that that's positive? Well, remember, like the, oh, yeah, we could have just done sine here. That probably would have been smart. Just take, whenever you get a new one, get the reciprocal, and you're, you're done with that, right? We know that sine is negative. If cotangent, which is a ratio of those two, is going to be negative, this had better not be negative, okay? So that's just going to be plus. And then secant, and then cosine rather, is going to be four over root seventeen. If you want to rationalize it, four root seventeen over seventeen. Okay, so it's an alternate way, and it's more algebraic. What we're gonna, where these really come into their own, is where we ta start talking about these functions more, and not just as individual values, but as graphs and as functions. And then we really want to be able to have control over the algebraic approach, and not always go back to pictures, because that's awkward when you're trying to do real algebra.